The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is the Players' Lounge, broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, and Newey Scruggs. Players' Lounge here on a Monday. Hello, everyone. I am merely Newey Scruggs, surrounded by Hall of Famers. <laughs> I wish. <Okay. laughs> North Texas Hall of Famers. Lance Dunbar. That's true. That's true. That's true. University of Toledo Hall of Famer Barry Church here. Even though I don't pay my dues, I'm still in there though. <laughs> hopefully, not talk about that. <laughs> There's still time. They're always. <laughs> they will always take a check. This okay? is true. This is true. It's the off season. You can go ahead and send the Rockets a check and join that booster to. club. They'll, they'll they'll take that money. I might have to. They asked me to be a spring coach for the spring game this year, so I might I might slide on up there, you, man. You have to go. I might I might I might have to. I'm gonna have have to. I ain't been up there in years, man. So I'm gonna have to slide up. We may have to video that. <laughs> yeah, you get a crew with me. Kid, you're screaming at. <laughs> Kids, <laughs> I mean, get your junk in order, man. I mean, think about it. Here's your alma mater, man. They got you in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. You spring it. Hey, will you come back? Yeah. So you, therefore, can be the role model to the other guys to say, Hey, look, man, I was undrafted here. Yeah. Are you doing the work? Mm-hmm. How many guys are going to tap into you and just say, hey, man, tell, how do I do what yeah. you did here? There's going to be a lot of them out there. A lot of them. Because it's like a pipeline of Toledo, from Pittsburgh to Toledo. So a lot of the guys up there, you know, I grew up with in high school, and, you know, their little brothers are up there now. So You got to go. I got to have to, man. I'm going to have to make you, that you, ha- you, you know what? I'm, and, I, and I truly, I sincerely mean this as someone who, you know, who looked up to other people. Like, hey, I want to do what you're doing. Man, you just never know that one person. Who you're going to reach? Yeah. That just is like, you know what, man? Church did. That was what I needed was to hear from church that day. Yeah. Coach can say this all day long. Now, here's a dude that went and did it. He told me these two, three things I need to do, and it changed my viewpoint. That's the other thing too. Mm-hmm. A viewpoint. How, how somebody sees it, man. You're gonna. You gotta go, man. Yeah. I'm gonna slide up there. You man. gotta go. I'm gonna go. April 9th, man. I'm what gonna you go. think, Dunbar? Yeah. 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 You gotta go. No, yeah, yeah. You gotta go. Gotta I mean, do it. Definitely, you reach. You can reach a lot of kids. You, you ever yeah. get back to North Texas? Oh yeah, yeah. Nah, lately, you know, after my last time here with you guys, you know, maybe want to go back and you know help out a little bit. We guilted you. Yeah, we guilted you. <laughs> into, you, you paying your dues? Have you, have you yeah. yeah. No, nah, you know <laughs> it sound like me out that's here. A, man. That's another discussion <laughs> for a different time. Uh, you know, look, man, it's tax write off. You know, right? It's yeah, yeah. 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 This is true. Like Forty right bucks. Right yeah. Same here. Yeah. Forty two. Forty two. Yeah. 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 It's a tax write off, man. Yeah. They'd, lo- they'd love to see it here. All right, players' lounge. You got an hour to talk a whole lot of Cowboys football and football across the national football league combine just wrapped up. But I want to talk about. About one of the bigger stories out there and, and coming out of the combine, really two stories coming out of the combine. Not shocking, but Amari Cooper yeah. and Tank Lawrence. Mm. Okay, so we'll start with Tank Lawrence. Uh, Calvin Watkins of the Dallas Morning News has covered the team for a decade. Says, all right, the team went to uh, team went to uh, Tank and said, you're going to take that cut, baby. Take that cut. Go ahead and take that, take that mm. slice off the top. No, that didn't sit well. And he him. said no. Calvin says it. Uh, Tank said no. And... The thing I've been trying to ask, because I asked Calvin, asked Chris Beam, who's been here forever today, just name me the last player the club went to and said, we need you to take a cut. The player said no to the cut, and then the player was on the squad that fall in full with their salary. I can say in my in my nine years of doing it, man, I've never – had that situation where the player said, you know what, I'm not taking this pay cut, but I'm going to still be on that roster. Yeah. I mean, it's like you st- we talked about it before the show. When they come to you, it's not a suggestion. Yeah. It's like, look, you either take this pay cut or, or you're up out of here. Yeah. And instead of saying it like that, they come and ask, you know, hey, man, you know, be a team player. Come out here and, you know, take a little bit off the top so we can go get, you know, some other pieces to, to add to this championship team. And Tank Lawrence, he told him, nah. Yeah. He said, I yeah. ain't with it. You know, I'm all, not, I'm not doing it. been a player, you know. Taking that pay cut, I mean, you, you work for that, and coming to you, you feel like, you know, it's kind of slapping the face, but... You signed the contract. Yeah, I mean... But you know what business you're in. Yeah, this if, is true, But too. if it's the other way around... It doesn't matter, yeah. because you know the business you're in. You I already mean, signed it, yeah. Okay. You already signed now, the dotted line. This, this is the beat. What you're saying here is fairness. Yeah. You want, you know, you want you want fairness. This league is not fair. This ain't the NBA. This is not baseball. It's not the NBA. <laughs> what, same as, as players, when you guys, when you guys as a union decided you weren't taking guaranteed contracts, then you knew they could play with you. Yeah. They, they, 
What's the old line? Biggie Smalls said, ain't no guarantee they're going to love you next year. Yeah. That's, your, that's, that's, that's the position you guys are in. That's, why, that's why you got to make as much as you can yeah. when you can. And if I'm in D-Law's position and they ask me to come take a pay cut, I'm, I'm doing exactly what he did. I'm saying no. Nah. And I'm putting the, them putting the shoe back on the Cowboys and say, all right, either you're going to release me or I'm going to still be here a part of this defense. Because I feel like he, he still has yeah, he still can go a market some. out there. He oh, still yeah. has somewhere he can go out there and perform and maybe rejuvenate himself. Like we've seen it a bunch of times before. Look at D. Ware. When, they, when, they, when he was a cap casualty yep. here, I believe back in 2013 or 2014, he was a cap casualty, went to Denver, Got himself a Super Bowl ring, was a part of that Super Bowl team. And we've seen it with Vaughn Miller when they was, you know, cap casualty or they traded him, one of the two. But they got him out of there in Denver and he went to L.A. and became a piece of that. So if I'm if I'm D-Law, I'm looking at those examples and I'm saying, look, man, I still got a lot in the tank. I'm not going to sit here and take a pay cut like I'm on my last legs with the Dallas Cowboys yeah. defense. And that's what he did and hopefully it pays off for him. And the injury's been holding him back, really, keeping him off the field. But once he's out there, he produces. Like You can see why they paid the money You get in spurts, but... Like I say, injury's been, and that's a older. part of the game, yeah. though. And that's that's one thing I will say with the boys for being proactive with this. We haven't seen a, the D law that we expected since man those back to back franchise tags when he had eleven sacks or twelve sacks, fifteen sacks one year. We haven't seen that D law, so I got to give kudos to the to the Cowboys organization. We're saying, look, we're paying you all this money to be a premier defensive end in this league, somebody that can go out there and affect the quarterback each and every game. And a part of that not only is sack numbers, but it's availability. You got to be on the field to 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 warrant such a high <laughs> price tag. And for these past couple of years, he just hasn't been available for this team. In the, in the past. I mean, you've seen the Cowboys stick with players, you know, and ride out that contract mm-hmm. and it kind of come back to bite them in the, in the butt. But, I mean, I guess I commend them from trying to change. And so what you're saying is many times the Cowboys have given a player the benefit of the doubt. Yes. Okay. So that. in 2017 and 2018, Tank Lawrence, 25 sacks. 2017 and 28, two years, two years. 25 sacks in two years. Sacks. That's high productivity. Okay. Last three seasons, $60 million in pay. 14 and a half sacks combined, 33 quarterback hits. Um, played just seven games last season due to a broken foot. And it's a $19 million salary cap hit. It is. And this is a team that's over the salary cap. You're looking for money. If he got the phone call and was offended he got the phone call, then his agent isn't doing his job. Yeah. Because somebody's going to have to come and tell you, look, the numbers dictate they're coming for you. Yeah. You got to be real. You, you can say no. Situation. Yeah. But don't be offended they called. Yeah. yeah. You got all rights to say no, but then at the end of the day, you got to look yourself in the mirror yeah. and say, have I been that guy that's supposed to be getting $20 million a year defensively? Have I been the, the T.J. Watts or the Aaron Donalds where it's consistently season in and season out? Not only are they putting up these numbers, but they're playing. You know, T.J. Watt missed a couple games here this year, but Aaron Donald, when the last time he missed a big stretch of games? He's always yeah. there for his team, which warrants his contract. You're looking at D-Law, and, you know, nothing against the player, because when he's healthy, like you said, he's a beast out there. But these past three years, it's like he just can't, can't get out of his way. He yeah. can't stay healthy, and he can't produce for this team. And the essence of the National Football League dictates when the production falls. And it's fallen for three, it's, for three years. It's, it's, not, okay? it's not what it was in 2017, 2018. They're coming. They're coming and they're going to ask you for a cut. So, you got a choice in this. Do you take the cut and try to do a contract that gives you some incentives that you can make some money back? Or do you decide to say, you know, no, I don't want to do it. Mickey Spagnuolo once said to me, it was one of the great, great, great lines I'll never forget. He says, guys will take a pay cut, but they won't take it for you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> True. yeah my cut was my money. My, I got cut this year for my money, but it was cut. But I went over there. I went over, like, but Andre Girard went to Baltimore. I said, like, man, you know what, man? No, what, cut. What, what? Nope. I'm going to go to Baltimore. Yep. But and this, is, and this is where I want you guys as former players to speak to this. You've been here so long like Tank has. Mm-hmm. Most, most of you guys stay here. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're from the boot. You're from Pittsburgh. You guys have stayed They're here. Stayed in the day. So if you decide you don't want to take the pay cut and they cut you, does your family stay here while you pursue your NFL opportunity somewhere else? Now you're paying for two residences. I've done that. Terrible. So you speak on that. Yeah, yeah you've I mean, done it. Speak on that. When I uh, went to LA with the Rams, and I was on a one year deal, and you know, LA's super high. Yeah. Like everything Taxes, really everything up there. Price of I living. had a mortgage here in Prosper, and I had to rent out there. And out there, I mean, I'm 1,800 square foot 
I'm renting for thirty five hundred a month, mm. so I'm paying double mortgages. And then the end of the day, now that I look back at it, it wasn't worth it. But it was more personal reasons why you know I wanted a better opportunity for for myself, you know, to you know springboard me to the future, or whatever. But at the end of the day, it wasn't working. Tank had to look at it as you know, do he want to be in Dallas? You know, sometimes my my agent always told me. It's always, you know, better not to take the bigger contract. Take a, you know, when you be comfortable with it, that way, you know, team won't, you won't be in a situation where you're at right now where a team won't come back and you get overpaid and they cut you. So the longevity, you want to, you know, you, you love being in Dallas. You got your family here. You want a long career. You know, you take that. I mean, how much, how much will he make in a year? 19, 19 is what, yeah. what he's scheduled to make. That's what they want to pay he, cut from. He, I don't know what the number they want to bring him to, yeah. but he's scheduled at 19. He should have done, you know, 12 a year for however long. And maybe they wouldn't be, he wouldn't be in the position he is right now. But see, then the agent, that was, then the agent would take a hit because he, he's his other clients would be like, man, you, you ain't giving us the top dollar. Yeah. You're giving us this, these medium, middle of the road contracts. And it would be hard for him to get his, his foot up foot up the ladder if, you know, he's, he's giving all these middle of the, middle of the road contracts. That's out. another topic. Yeah, that's another topic about, from yeah, that situation. These agents, but yeah. With the, with, with the D-Law situation, it's stressful. It's stressful when, you know, because his kids, are, they're in school now. They're older now. And then you got to either bring your whole family, uproot your whole family to a whole new situation, you know, get a house, get everything going in that way. Or you do it like I've, a couple of my old teammates done it where their family stays behind and, you know, keeps everything going on here in Dallas. And they go do their ventures over here and there. But that's extremely stressful when you're talking about a marriage, you know. The wife being at home with all these kids by herself and, you know, the, the the father of the players out there providing for him out there, but he can't really be back and forth. You know, it's not like, you know, there's Dallas here and he's playing in Houston. What if he's in Dallas here and he's playing all the way out in Philly? Like, you can't just come like, back and where? forth. You in Denver. You in Denver. You can't go back and forth. And when you got kids like that, it's an extremely stressful situation. But I harping back to it, you know, this this league and this this time where you can get all this money, it's it's a short period of time. So you gotta capitalize on it, you gotta take advantage of it. And if I'm D Law and if I'm I'm in his situation, I'm going ahead and I'm saying no to the pay cut and seeing if there's something else out there that can bring home the ducats. But uh as far as being here, yeah, I wouldn't have took the pay cut either. So the other portion of it becomes the nineteen million. If your current team is not giving you nineteen million. Do you anticipate anyone else in the National Football League giving Tank Lawrence nineteen million dollars in twenty twenty two? I don't see nineteen necessarily, but I think he still can get double digits as far as you know uh, millions. So up above ten, I think he can still get above ten. I think he's that good of a player. Uh, so to me, the situation comes down to you know what are what is he comfortable with? Is he comfortable with you know making only not only but is he making you know thirteen or fourteen mil rather than if you take a pay cut staying here you're making nine or eight? You know it, it all comes down to how comfortable you have in that situation and you know hopefully he's been good with his money and he's comfortable as hell. So here comes the other thing you just said: twelve, thirteen, fourteen, or fifteen. How much do you think he's going to be able to get? That on doesn't have incentives attached to it. Yeah, you, got, you, that, I mean, yeah. you, know, you guys have done the contract <laughs> <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, hey I mean, we love you. We're going to be it. Well, and it's got the tiss and the roster bone to die. I mean, that's that's, that's another part, man, that a guy of guys, fans don't get this part. Because yeah, they just see the number at the ticker. Yeah. Thank Three you. years, 27 million. But they don't really see, okay, this is fully guaranteed as signing. This is guaranteed only if you're here March 1st. Or if you only pay. You know. Yeah, they all, they don't see the little details. So that's another thing you got to look at. You know, what what are you getting fully guaranteed at signing? And you it, know? May, it may be end up being the same thing Dallas is trying to get offer him now. So... Like I say, he might be in the same boat, just in another place. If you if you were in D Law's shoes, and let's just say Tampa Bay offered D Law the same amount as the Cowboys, would you stay here knowing that that team was like, hey, you, you're not playing to your capabilities right now. We want you to take this pay cut, or would you go to greener grass somewhere else? Well, like I said, me being in, you know I've been in his shoes, maybe not, maybe not as much money, but now looking back at it, I might think about staying for less and just you know. Maybe a, a one or two year two year deals, you know, shorter deal, and maybe revisiting, you know, basically betting on myself and mm -hmm. coming back and showing them that I, I can stay healthy and and be the player I was a couple years ago. No one, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So, so what I'm hearing from both of you guys is this is about that after after signing comfortability mattered yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. that there was a price tag on being comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
without a doubt. And, and knowing D Law, like I've known him these past couple years, I truly don't see him taking a pay cut. Like I, I just don't see that in his personality. His just just how he is. I think he still feels like he's one of the top defensive ends in the National Football League. And he's like, I'm gonna go. He I think he'd rather go and prove it. Like that, I'm still one of these top dogs. Then take a pay cut and stay here. I, that's just me. That's what you know. The guy I know, I think he, I think he would uh, yeah, no, go I, ahead and take I, that. I second that. Yeah. I, mean, I said that earlier. I feel like he's his personality. That he believes in himself. He's gonna bet on himself every time. But like I said, he got to take account of the past, his injuries, and just the game of football, man. Injuries, he's, he's injuries happen. He got a couple shoulders, yeah. back. Foot is adding up. So one of your old teammates, Des Bryant, yeah. when, the, when the Cowboys let him go, and he was scheduled to make fifteen, and and Des actually was, you know, out there on the market. He was you know, looking for like twelve and that mm-hmm. kind of thing, and, and he didn't find it. Mm-mm. He did. He did not find it. I mean, basically, people were offering like half, and it, as you become older, and you're not playing as much. I mean, these 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 are teams. They're trying to buy low. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it is. That's exactly right. Nobody's trying to overpay here. Bro. Everybody's trying to buy low. And that that's that point in time of just looking at these things and just saying, okay, all right, you know, what 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 happens and where do you go there? So obviously, you know, Tank Lawrence and his contract uh, got out here later in the week, mm-hmm. but to start the week up there in Indianapolis it was about Amari Cooper, and Coop being owed twenty million dollars, and you know the Cowboys have to go ahead and you know get him off the roster by in, in March, mm-hmm. at a date in March, so they don't have to pay it. Their, his contract was set where they. Never asked him to extend it like they've done a Tyron Smith. Mm-hmm. Kicking the road down the can right. a little right. bit. They were yeah. just like, no, nah, we're going to leave this contract intact. So you knew from Jump Street, okay, here's a prime candidate to be let go mm-hmm. in a cost cap savings thing. Um, by the way, I just heard back from d Ware here. And uh, his answer was yes. He said, did they ask you to take a pay cut before they released you? He said yes. Yeah, and, and he didn't take it. And right? He didn't take it, and mm. so there you, and there he went. So he's gone. If it happened, to, if it happened to a dude that's <laughs> going to the Hall of Fame, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. it can happen to anybody. All right. Once I seen him go and then yeah. Manning, I was oh yeah, like, anybody. Can that happened. I was like, I couldn't believe they did. I remember it. that day. Yeah. I, was, we were, and I walked in the locker room, and I'm you know my my you know back in the old um, yeah. Valley Ranch it was yeah. a big old square. <laughs> so I'm walking in. D, I'm on one of the corners. D wears at the end of the other corner, and he's throwing some stuff in the bag. I'm like, oh man, we you know doing. It's off season. What's going on? You know, I walk over there. Well, we got a different workout outside or something. He dap gave me one of them. You know how they give them looks? They look I down see, and give yeah. you one of them dap. I'm like, I got, got, oh, got. What's <laughs> popping? Nah, no, not D. Where? Not D. He was up out of there, man. And I was just as shocked. I was. We I mean, that, that had the whole locker room shook after that. Because yeah. when you seen that, it was like, man, any of us can go at Anybody. any time. It don't matter who you are. You can go. Anybody. And I was shocked, man. I was shook. So if that happened to him. Then at this point in time, I'm just going to assume the days are numbered for Tank Lawrence here. I would agree. Unless they, he takes it out of nowhere. Right, right. And so and, and this is where your agent and, and so what would you guys do? What what kind of conversations would you guys have with your agent at this point? If you're Amari Cooper and your Tank Lawrence and you just see, okay, they they're looking at me. And it's the chances are that all the tea leaves say I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> if I'm if I'm I'm going to my agent, I'm saying, what's the market for me out there? Okay. Like, you know, what what do you think? What's the feel? Because they went to the combine. Your agents going there, talking to all these GMs and head coaches at the combine and Indy. What, where do you see my value out there in the open market? Now, if you, if your agent comes back and says, "Man, look, we got the guarantee for sure. We can get this, that, and the third, and you don't have to take that big of a pay cut. You can go here to do that. And then it, then it's all good." But if he comes back and saying, "Hey, man, I don't, you know, the market's kind of low for for DNs right now. We got a lot coming out in college that are that are expected to be drafted high, and you know, a lot of teams don't have enough cap." That wants you don't have enough cap space to get to pay you what they that what you feel that you deserve. That's when you got to have a serious conversation and say, man, look myself in the mirror and say, hey, you know, do I want to stay and be comfortable in a system that I know in a team that I know, yeah. or do I want to put myself out there and kind of be uncomfortable and, and kind of do on, and start it over on a, on a prove it type deal? I mean, it's it's a slippery slope, it's but tough. it's a tough it's a tough situation yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. So. Look at the number. I want you guys to just give you numbers. Mm-hmm. So this is so, and this is where fans don't get so much of this is about numbers. You've got a number cap. You can't go over. You got to manage the numbers in between. So uh, according to uh, Spotrack.com, they looked at what is the amount of money teams are spending on defensive ends. The 49ers are number one in the NFL. They've got five defensive ends that they're paying twenty twenty two dollars for. 
uh, twenty-two dollars. You know, I should say two two thousand twenty-two cap dollars. Uh, Forty-four million dollars is what they're paying towards five guys. Forty-four mil for mm. yeah. What yeah. they got both over there? Yeah, they got a couple okay. cats over there. The Raiders are number two. Seven guys, forty-one point five million is what they're paying. They're that's before ju- they about are, to pay Crosby. Right. These are just defensive ends. Jets, six guys, forty million dollars. Saints. Five guys, $39.9 million. The Cowboys, three guys, $31 million. Mm. Just in three. And that's before you got to pay Randy if they if they decide to do that. Mm. I mean, it's Tank's taking up 19 of that. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, this is, you know, I, the other teams I mentioned, they sitting up here with five, six, five, seven. Six cats, you sitting yeah. up here with three. three. Is tanked in you in your opinion, you both of your opinions, I want to know, is is he worth that big of a cap hit? With his injury history and just low productivity these past couple of years, is he worth that that type of money? I would You're on when, the spot. When healthy, yes. Only when, if you don't have other guys that can, you know, play, that can, you know, take some of that production that he, he has been bringing to the team. But like I said, if you have other guys that can ball, then no. Okay. I would say. No, you just look at the numbers. No, no. We, we, we talked about what he did in 2017, 2018, mm-hmm. 25 sacks. The last three years, you paid $60 million. You've got 14 and a half sacks. It's mm. not there. Yeah. The same way, and this is the interesting thing that I found this week, listening to to uh, media and then reading things that fans had to say on Twitter. Uh, the the amount of people like, Amari Cooper is not worth the $20 million. Look at the number. Bump, bump, bump. Yet, they're sitting here you know, kind of back in tank. At the end of the day, neither player, based on their numbers, Mm -hmm. was good enough last year for the salary they're earning that you would want to re-up on that. Neither player. Yeah, you're right about that. And I could see if if Tank was opening up other opportunities for guys to get one-on-ones out there. Like, if he he was on the field the entire time but only had six sacks, but everybody else was eating off of one-on-ones because he was getting the line um, pushed his way and double-teamed, then I could say, ah, maybe because he's opening up such other, you know, holes for other people to ball out. But even when he was on the field, it ain't like Randy was, you know, destroying things on the other side or the interior defensive line was going crazy. It was mostly Parsons out there doing his thing, and he was the one that was creating these one-on-ones for everybody else to eat. You are going so to the spot like... that I was going to go to. All right, so when Mike, no- when Mike Nolan was here, mm-hmm. you know, that first year for, for McCarthy, at the end of the season, Tank was the best player on the defense. To me. Yeah. Yeah. The best player was him. Yeah, yeah. I would say that. Now that you've got DQ here, Parsons. The best player on the defense is Micah Parsons. The second best player is, is Diggs. Yeah. And there's a gap, too. It ain't like it ain't, it's a gap. Who, oh, by the way, he's going to have to get paid. Yeah. This is his third year because he's second round pigs in only four years. Yeah. So you're going to, at some yeah, point in time, pick, yeah. while you're looking at reducing a salary for Tank Lawrence, you're also going to have to start looking at who else do we have to pay down the road. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about a guy who was an all pro corner. Ain't cheap. No, 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 no. One of the highest paid okay. defensive positions. Yeah. He's out there or D-line, or D-line. snatching balls, leading the league in picks. That's not going to be some uh, cheap. Hey, man, uh, that's, that's just $10. That's $10. That's $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $10. $
Mm. Only will get better. Right. Mm. So uh, to put 19 mil toward Tank, I can see them saying, no, we're not going to do that. To put 20 million towards Amari Cooper, I can see them saying, no, we're not going to do that for that money. Hey, I love Coop, man. But you ain't get 1,000 yards, miss yeah. two games because of COVID? I mean, these, this kind of – is this worth the money? And you got C.D. Lane. It's not, you know, it's not like yeah. you don't have a guy who has the potential to be That's a – That's true. Only thing that scares me on the Coop situation, I'm not really nervous about the law situation because, you know, we saw the productivity. And if they do release him, I mean, they could put some of that bread towards Randy Gregory, who I think he can ascend this year if he can stay healthy as well. And you got Parsons. You got pieces on the defense that – without a D-law, I think can still be um, a pretty solid defense. But on the offensive side of the football, the only thing that makes me nervous is, you know, is CD that guy? Like, if we get rid of Coop, I understand he hasn't had, you know, you know these 1,000 yard and 1,100, 1,200 yard. I understand that. But can CD be that guy? Mm, okay, okay. Can, can Gallup, but, can we bring Gallup uh, back? In let, a, let, let's, take a br- let's take a break. Marinate on it, Dunbar. Okay. Lance Dunbar, <laughs> marinate on yeah, your phone on. here. Phone. All right, we good. Get your phone. Get your phone. And we will dive into this because this is a very good question yeah. about what will your receiving core look like without number 19. He's Barry Church, Lance Dunbar uh, in with us. We do not have Danny McCray. Danny McCray is on assignment again, mm-hmm. doing things. <laughs> we can't can't talk about. Nope. <laughs> but we've been there before. Yep. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is the Players Lounge. Brought to you by Hotels.com on DallasCowboys.com radio. At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Back to the Players' Lounge. Attention, Cowboy fans. There's a new official razor of the Dallas Cowboys. It is Shave Logic. Shave Logic, proud to offer Cowboy fans a special upgrade for a limited time. Visit ShaveLogic.com. Get a free $10 gift card with your purchase. Go to ShaveLogic.com now. Danny McCray out today, but he is... uh, uh, texting me talking about he wants to hear the same thing about Tyron <laughs> Smith. <laughs> you knew it was coming. You um, knew it. You knew it. Okay, uh, how about this? Uh, Tyron Smith does not have a cap hit of $27 million. That's Tank huge. Lawrence does. So yeah. that's a big old that's difference right there. That's so, huge. So, so there you go. A lot go. of money. Um, uh, he's Barry Church, the Toledo Rocket. North Texas Hall of Famer Lance Dunbar in with us. Both of them are former Dallas Cowboys players. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is the Players' Lounge. Okay, you asked a really good question. You know, what's the confidence level in your offense uh, if you do not have Amari Cooper? And at this point in time, I'm not expecting Cooper back either. Um, they need money. Okay, We've got $22 million cap hit, and it gets, you know, and it has a salary this year, $20 million. Did you see $20 million in production last year? I did not personally. No, no. I did not. No. I did. no. So, what's your confidence level in CD Lamb being the number one guy and your thoughts about 
what else they'll do. Talked about uh, you know Adam Schefter, ESPN, and other the Cowboy folks are talking about uh, them working on the deal to bring Michael Gallup back. Yeah, I mean, I, if you watch CD, I mean CD is a baller. He's been a baller in college, and coming in his first year, his first year last year, right? Mm-hmm. He no, no, yeah. second, no, second, second, year. second year, second year. I mean, he's produced when ball. You know, it's been times where he was a little off, a little bit with some drops, but you know. With him, with these other guys, you got, you got uh, Ced Wilson. It's, yeah, it's, Cedric, Cedric Wilson's a free agent. Okay. You so Ced Wilson's every, a free agent. Michael Gallup's a free agent. Oh, yeah. So, you, I mean, you retain those guys. You got a lot of young guys that can, you know, make up some of the production. Uh, Coop had, you know, last year. So, I mean, I believe in CD. I mean, you can look, look at his talent and see that he's a baller. You know, he just, I guess, need more opportunities to take advantage of. Okay. Okay. You see, what you think? What see you think? to me, I, I like CD's game because he's a guy that can go play outside. He can play in a slot. You know, they can draw up different things. He could be a jet sweep guy. He's kind of a jack of all trades at the receiver. My only concern is that last stretch of games. I think it was from the Oakland game on. I think he only had like maybe two or three tubs, and he just wasn't putting up those big time numbers that you know we expect from a number one wide receiver. And Coop wasn't either. So I mean, he you know he he's not you know. He's not exempt from this at all, but it just makes me nervous because I'm not so sure that CD can draw that attention that a Coop could. And I feel like, you know, through a lot of the his time here with the Cowboys, he drew a lot of attention and it allowed the Gallups, it allowed CD Lands, it allowed Schultz to go out there and do what they were able to do. Now, I've also heard some reports that, you know, getting rid of Coop opens up the door for Gallup and Schultz to get paid. And to me, if that's the reason they're letting Coop go, not just because of productivity, but to keep these other two, I think that's a big time mistake. Um, I think you know Michael Gallup is a, is, a, is a heck of a player, but I think he's a complimentary piece, kind of similar to to a Juju Smith Schuster. Like if he has a number one out there, I think Gallup can eat. But if he doesn't have that bona fide guy out there, I'm not so sure he can he can he can eat on an everyday basis like we saw with Juju Smith Schuster. And then when you talk about bringing Schultz back as well. I think Schultz is a good tight end, but I think he's a system guy. I think he's a guy that, you know, benefited from, you know, these all these weapons on the outside. A lot of his damage is done with five-yard catches. He, he's not really a dynamic guy that when you think of a Kittle, when you think of a, a Kelsey, somebody that you could split out as a wide receiver and do damage against corners. I think he's a guy that, you know, benefits from the system of Kellen Moore. Um, and he's not that great of a blocker either. So if that's the case, if that's why we're trying to get rid of Coop to, to be able to bring these two guys back, I think that's a mistake. Um, but overall, getting rid of Coop, it just makes me nervous because that wide receiver room is extremely young. And I'm not sure they can they can hold up to it without a bona fide guy out there as well. But are you willing to make the twenty million dollar commitment to bring him back? That's you, you, your, yeah. you know you, your logic makes sense. But now I have to balance your logic. With the financial aspect of it, did they even ask for him to take a cut, a pay cut, or is it just either trade or or release? And I don't see why a team would trade for him if they know if they don't trade for him, they're going to release him anyways. So I don't know where I don't know why they would put that out there. But twenty million—that's a huge—that's a a huge number for somebody that didn't really eat every single game. He was out there healthy. Especially so. What do you think about the O line? Because they need some help. What's more important, having a uh, coop or showing up the O line, you know, for this t- for this offense. For this offense. Great point. Yeah. I mean, you, you, here's essentially you're trying to do it all. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, you're really trying to do yeah. it all, and your biggest bone of contention for your organization, right? You're over the cap, yeah. so you got to get down. You need guys, and so that's where you're looking at Amari Cooper. Twenty million dollars, and yeah. you're looking to take Lawrence for nineteen million dollars, and so this is the position they put themselves in. Remember the time when they cut Dez? They really didn't have any good options. They talked about some little smorgasbord of dudes and yeah, it was smorgasbord of trash. And, and, yeah. I mean, it was a whole bunch of terrible. Yeah, it was a yeah. terrible thing. So at least you have CD Lamb. But how many times did Danny McCray come on the show and say, "Look, CD's our number one guy." Yeah. The problem, in my opinion, right now, and you've heard CD and other people talk about this. How how are guys being used? These guys weren't happy with the way they were used. CeeDee Lamb spent the last seven football games with the Cowboys without a touchdown. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Seven. The last seven, Dunbar. Okay, the last touchdown he had was November 14th against Atlanta in the 44, uh, 43-3 win. That was the last time. Hadn't had 100 yards since uh, uh, Halloween. 
Mm. When, when he had 112, 112 yards when Cooper Rush played. I mean, to me, I go back to me, the, the underutilization was amazing to me. Mm. When you look at, at, at uh, receptions, okay, the game against San Francisco in the playoffs, he had one catch. And that's, that's inexcusable to CeeDee Lamb. Five targets, one catch. He's got to get more than that. But then the Philadelphia game, he had two catches in the season finale. The Arizona game, that was another key game because mm-hmm. the Cowboys were battling for playoffs. He had uh, three catches. Then the Washington game, he had four catches. Yeah, this is just not the kind of production that a number one – I mean, Devontae Adams ain't going in no game, coming out with no numbers looking like oh, that. No, no, no. And, and it makes sense for the boy. If if they're believing scheme over players, like Kellen Moore scheme over the players, then I get it. Then I say, you know what? All right, you know, release release Coop. I get it. <laughs> but we've seen that that scheme, it just, it can't. It just doesn't work. Yeah. You gotta have a it's guy okay. outside that is able to do damage. You gotta have people that. That you can say, you know what, I know you're double covering this guy, but I'm going to draw up a way to get this guy open or find a way to get this guy the ball. And we don't put an effort on that. The Cowboys didn't put an Sean effort McVay, on that. Sean McVay season. don't coach here. Sean McVay. <laughs> <laughs> you see Cooper Cup, Kyle, the Kyle Shanahan don't coach here. It's <laughs> little Debo getting the ball. Like, it's well, just. you got to give him the opportunities. Yeah, and, it's, and they, I guess, but you know, just looking at what we've seen this past season, this organization, and to my opinion, they, they believe the scheme over the players, and they're willing to go with the Kellum or yeah, the Kellum Moore route of just saying well, we can divvy this up, rely on the quarterback, and you know we're just gonna spread the ball around. But we've seen that that just doesn't work. No. It just doesn't work. And so you've got you need some guys, you need got, the guys, and, yeah. and the tight end position is another another concern for the Cowboys here. You know, Dalton Schultz is a free agent. Yeah. Um, Blake Jarwin has got paid and, and and battled injuries. And look, Blake Jarwin ain't gonna be back. He's gonna be back. He just had a hip. Money. In, yeah, he just had right. No, there's just no way. It's no way. I mean, Blake Jarwin's a guy who got paid and, and you know had performed yeah. in the contract. So you got, you got to go too. Yeah. You're, you're looking for money. Yeah. And you're also looking to try to bring back some players here. I think they would like to bring Dalton Schultz back, but then you got to ask you, what's the number? Is he he's gonna be he's gonna get at least twelve or eleven on the open market? Is he a twelve eleven tight end? I don't, you know, and that's the thing. Who to, for what team? That's what I'm saying. Because I can, it's not like to me. I don't think he's a guy that's that dynamic to where you can put him on any squad and he's gonna do damage out there. Like you know, Kelsey and, and Kittle and those guys, you can right. put them anywhere and they're gonna do damage. He gets most of his work on, you know, bootlegs, play action, eating off of tight ends, you know, five yards sitting over here. You feel like somebody else can come in and. I feel like you can draft a guy, yeah. third, fourth round, and or, come or, in or and sign, do that. Or sign a player. Or um, just sign a player. Yeah. Uh, what's the kid that went number one before um, the Ravens took him, before they took Lamar Jackson? Uh, Hayden Hurst. Yeah, he's, a, he's up there. You know, so, so I think that, that you may have to just kind of, the way you piecemealed your safety position this year, you may have to piecemeal your tight end position exactly. this year. That exactly. may be something you have to do, but that's that's the challenge of what the Cowboys are battling right now. Yeah, that's a lot. That's how, a lot. How, right, how do you do this? But you need money. The first thing, you've got to clear the cap. And so clearing the cap is, is you're looking at two players um, from all reports coming out of Indianapolis, Tank Lords and, and Amari Cooper. And then I think Blake Jarvis is going to be another person there. You know, Dorrance Armstrong is a free agent. Yeah. And, and you heard what Stephen Jones said. It, he's, he, they want to bring back their own guys. But in my opinion, you know, bringing back our own guys, is that good enough? J. Ron Curse is, is another guy you got to bring. Well, <laughs> here's the, and this is, so Dunbar, this is the thing I always talk about. <laughs> We're sitting here dissecting the Cowboys issues. Other teams are doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rams got problems. Yeah. You know, they won the Super Bowl. Guess what? You got problems. I mean, you know, you're the Bengals. You got to figure out how yeah, do we get yeah. some more. I mean, <laughs> there's every. Them. Right. There's no team out here who's just like, you know, man, we we're good. good. Yeah. And then when you think about Tampa Bay, who thought they were good? And everybody they coming back. Everybody back. Brought everybody back. Yeah. Well, you still saw those issues here, yeah. man. So this is this is the game of the National Football League. It's how you get there, but you cannot keep everybody. You can't. And you sign these contracts in good faith, and you're hoping for good things, but you have to recognize when they're when they don't go the right way. And I just feel like too many times, Dunbar, you alluded to it. The Cowboys probably let guys hang around a year too long. Yeah. No, we've seen it all. We've seen it all the time. Belichick getting rid of, getting rid of him a year early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't learning about that. You ain't learning about so, that. So, so, you know, by all accounts, uh, for three straight seasons, and making sixty million dollars, the Cowboys have believed in Tank Lawrence. Yeah, they gave him opportunity after opportunity. Right. You know, he just he wasn't able to stay healthy. And the old saying goes, you can't make the club in the tub. And, and you know. And, and for Cooper, Cooper's a, I, I, I have no doubts that Amari Cooper can leave the Cowboys and go someplace else and have a good football. So oh, we yeah. have a lot oh, of good yeah. football left in it. And the, 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 Cow, the Cowboy fans could even be lamenting, lamenting the fact, why, why did we let him get away? I could see that all day long. Mm-hmm. But 
right now you got money problems. Yeah. And they've lined it up for him to be gone real quick. I think he will be. I think he'll be out of here. Like you said, they tank Lawrence as well. If they, you know, when mm-hmm. they come and you don't take that pay cut, it's not a suggestion. It's either you take it or you're gone. So I can see both of those guys being uh, out of this Dallas, Dallas-Fort Worth area here before the next season starts. Yep, finding a new home. And I guess and hopefully they ball out. Yep. You know, well, we'll and see. And Tyron Smith, by the way, Danny McCray, sorry, uh, Tyron Smith is going to be here. So <laughs> just, sorry. That's, that's, it is what it is. He ain't going nowhere else. It he is what it is. Nowhere. They can't afford to let him go. Uh, let's, take, uh, let's take another break here. And I want to get into – a fast combine time and get your mm. thoughts on this. Okay. okay. We'll All do right. that next right here on the Players Lounge brought to you by Hotels.com. And this is DallasCowboys.com Radio. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks. Free shipping! At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. Back to the Players' Lounge. Hey, registration is now open for Dallas Cowboys Youth Football and Dance Academy Camp. Save $25 with early bird pricing when you register. By May 9th, camps are available at at and Stadium and Ford Center. At the Star in Frisco, visit DallasCowboys.com slash academy to secure your spot today. All right, Players' Lounge here. Danny McCray's off. So, yeah. um, when's McCray back, you know? Yeah, I want to say April. Okay. Man, like mid-April we should be back, so. Okay. Sure we'll have another story. I mean, Cowboy look, camps. Look, Cowboy. look up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we we did this last year without yeah, him. So, yeah, so, yeah. so let him never, ever, ever again talk about Miss Show oh, yeah. for us. No, okay? right. If I hear anything about attendance out of McCray's mouth, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 mm. no, yeah. Don't want to hear it. Hear, hear nothing else from him on that, so he, he's eliminated. Mm. Um, Kalen Barnes. Ooh, that boy was rolling. Sick of bears. Uh, <laughs> cornerback from Baylor ran a right. four point two three forty yard mm, dash. That's rolling. That's rolling. But what's crazy to me before we dive into it, what's crazy to me is, you know, how you had all this, you know, going into the combine, players saying they ain't not gonna show up, and you know, the hype for the combine ain't as big as it as it was before. And now all of a sudden. When we get to the combine, you know, the people running the combine, you got guys out here running four two ones, unofficial. You got guys out here running all these different times. And I'm like, hold on, man. This, that can't be the case. That can't be the case. Like, this dude ran a four two one. The dude from um, Ohio State, Chris Olave, I think he had like a four two six unofficial. Then they come out a day later, oh, no, these guys really ran four three eights, four three nines. And I'm like, man, y'all ain't slick. Y'all just try to get people hyped up on the combine once again in these 40 times. So they probably were out there running 39 yards. But, hey, they had some impressive numbers out there nonetheless. It was a fast track. For it sure. Was. It was fast. Boys was rolling. I think all the receivers was like under 4-3. It was something crazy, man. Another Baylor guy got a 4-2. Even old linemen. I mean, they 
I had a couple of guys, like four or five guys under four nine. I seen a D line run a four three. Now he 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 says he plays D line, but the dude might have been soaking wet to two on two twenty. But he went a four three seven. Crazy. I'm just like, man, what? So let me go over these all time numbers at the combine. Mm-hmm. Just get your take on it. John Ross set the combine record 2017 wide receiver out of Washington 422 with top 10 5 years in the league 62 uh, 62 catches he's now with the Giants Is he st- he's still in the league yeah he was with the Giants mm. last year um so Kalen Barnes of uh Baylor 423 yesterday and then the third fastest time Chris Johnson running back out of East Carolina in 2008 uh led the NFL in rushing in 2009 with the Tennessee Titans finished with 6 1,000 yard seasons. Yeah, that's all I see. Yeah, that's all I career. Okay, then after that, next fastest time, 4.24 for Rondell Menendez in 1999. He's a wide receiver, he's a seventh round pick of the Falcons, never played in the NFL, not one snap. <laughs> <laughs> Jerome Mathis, 4.26, 40 yard dash, wide receiver, 2005, touched the ball 90 times in three years playing for the Texans, and he last played at age 24. Go. Mm, 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 mm. Dre Archer, running back, 2014, 4.26. Touched the ball 34 times in a two-year career with the Steelers. Last played at age 24. Mm. So, these mm. are your fast four, fastest 40 times ever, and we've seen one guy. One. One guy. Doesn't mean a thing. That's And, it, and it's crazy. Like, people got to realize, like, yeah, you know, sh- straight line speed is great. That, that's all good. And, you know, you want to be able to run fast, but – Football is not played in just a you know straight line. Like yeah. guys are moving left to right. They're trying to make guys miss, break tackles, lower the shoulder, bring some pain with it. So it's not all about straight line speed. That's why I never really understood the forty yarder and like being that hyped up in that big of a situation. I'm also hating because my forty was slow as heck, and that's probably <laughs> the reason why I didn't get drafted. So I'm hating on that. But I just the hype for the forty. I mean, they got so many people drafted that used to, you know, look at the Raiders. That's all they looked at. We want speed. We want speed. When the last time a Raiders, you know, picked a guy with speed and it worked out. I mean, you can run a 4-1 and can't catch the ball. Exactly. Oh, we look at Tim. You was on the team with Teddy. Yeah. Yeah. Track star, UTSA. Fast. Fast. I mean, he was fast, (laughs) fast. Man, he couldn't play a lick. (laughs) He could. I mean, that was it. He couldn't play a lick. And it's, I just think the hype for the 40. Now, I, I put more stock in, you know, short shuttle, the L cone, stuff like that to where you can, because that's what people are going to be doing on the football field. You can translate be, a little bit more than yes, just running a straight just line. Just running a straight line is just, even as a receiver, if you run a fade, you still got to make that guy off the line this. <laughs> you still got to put some flavor on it. ain't just going to be head down, just digging. So, gotta I be get a ball it. player. I mean, you can be yeah. fast as you want, yeah. strong as you want. Got to know how to play football. At the end of the day, I think it's more about controlled speed. Like, you've seen guys who just run out the gym, but they can't stop. And a guy just you know, go right past me. Yeah. It's all about the controlled speed. And, and as you've seen, you know, a lot of these guys that run, you know, 4-4s, four the 4-6s four in there, they seem to be better football players because they can control their speed. I wonder why the Combine still runs these old-school traditional drills, and we've seen so much change about <laughs> The science of of athletes yeah. and and being able to use different metrics and that we're still gonna just run 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 down there. <laughs> I, I, I just I just find that very interesting. Yeah. That the and and you know teams are letting you rise and fall based on this. Yeah. Where you know okay Jerry Rice did not have a good forty time. Mm, greatest receiver of all time. Emmitt Smith did not have a good forty time. Nope. They have gold jackets. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Retired as key with key statistics leading their positions of all time. But we're still sitting here. What is it? You know, we're about a 40 time. Like Tom Brady didn't run out. Peyton Man, they, they, not, they didn't outrun anybody. But we're Gold still learning about this, you know. That's why I just wonder when when does the National Football League make some attempts at changing the metrics and just how they go about this process of deciding who can play. And so we're all turning on the TV. Is he going to run? For, and he's got all some, some shorts, t shirt. <laughs> the whole hype though. You got the Rich Eyes and 40 and all this stuff. And he, like you said, with the drills, they still do that drill where wide receivers run the line and yeah, the gauntlet yeah, to catch yeah, it. Like, man, you're going over the middle like that. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't just going to catch it and go. Yeah. It's like going to be trying to knock your block off. Okay, so here's the thing. I asked, 
when you when you guys were the Cowboys, once you're with the team, did you were you ever clocked at the forty? Not the no. forty. No, we did like a what was it? Like a twenty. Twenty. Yeah. It was like a twenty twenty yard you know but that's burst. Like in the off season, yeah, just competitive, trying to get numbers so we compete against each other. Okay, so basically, you're running this forty yard dash, and they're never, and it never matters the rest of your career. Never. The, the only time it'll ever matter if you're one of those guys that you know got to jump around from team to team. You get like a Monday workout, and you come in like, all right, you know they're working us out. Then they make those guys. I've seen them run the forties and go yeah. through the whole combine. Yeah, little, yeah, but once you in the league and like you're you know, either even if you're just you know a special team or you're you're established player, you're not running no forty. <laughs> the most you'll run is on a kickoff. That, that that's, that's the most you're gonna run unless you break a long sprint or something like that. But they ain't making you tired of forty. When I first, so I don't know if you guys are familiar, but I did the little local Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. Yeah, yeah, Dallas. Yeah, Dallas yeah. So I, that's that's I, well, I'm thinking that's the reason why I was able to get with the team, whatever. But Drills that we was doing, I'm like, how could they even judge anything off of this? Like, like this don't make make uh, make make me a good football player by doing a little drills that we was doing. I was lost. I was like, I was like, I, was like, I, was like, I didn't really do nothing for you to be like, oh yeah, he's a good football player. <laughs> I've seen one time I was watching. You know, we were coming off practice and they were doing um, the guys coming in for a workout, and I watched one day and they were like, the DB was on his back, he had to do a sit up. <laughs> they threw a medicine ball at him, he caught it. Sit back down, sit up, threw them ball, got up and ran like twenty yards. And I'm like, what? How is that? How are you evaluating yeah. something on that? Like, how does that? What is that going to do in football? Wouldn't it? Like, I can understand you got to get up, you know, hot stove. You don't want to be on the ground, but you know, I don't, I don't get it. It was, it was <laughs> kidding. No yeah, it, yeah, these drills Somehow. are crazy. The only thing I can make sense of what just how how that someone's trying to figure out how how in shape are you. Yeah. That's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. To do this, you know, quick, you know, the the, the quick hit exercise, how, how in shape. That's the only thing I could think of. But, That's probably what it is. Yeah, yeah it's got to be. You know, this dude been laying around on the couch. Jack- or, you know, what, what, <laughs> hey. you know, can, you know what, how far away are you from being able to suit up and play for us? Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of. That's got to be. Very good thing they didn't uh, ask Jack- Jacksonville, ask you to run the 40, huh? Nah, <laughs> yeah, what the problem? They'd have been right. like, hold on. Shia Khan would have been like, yeah, hold let me on get that check game. back. They would have had to catch me, though. Yeah. I'll tell you <laughs> 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 so, so you know, for the combine, good luck to everyone who who now has to. You know, now you go into now you go into pro your pro day. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so for, for both of you guys, um, tell me about your pro day, what you remembered, and what did you take away from it that you thought worked for you as you ended up getting an opportunity. Go ahead, Dumbo. Um, to be honest with you, like we like were just talking about, I mean, we ran a forty. You know, did the L drill, L drill mm-hmm. and then five ten five. I mean, like I said, I, mean, I ran some good times, decent times. I ran a forty and a four four okay. six, I believe. But like I said, I I, I was I wasn't hoping they would judge me on uh you know doing those drills because at the end of the day, it's about playing football, yeah. uh, which I thought I felt like I was pretty good at. But like I said, I worked hard. I guess they seen the I guess the work ethic and how hard I've been working. To prepare for that day, but I mean, like, I don't know what they really took away from what I was doing. But I just, like I said, I don't really think I should have been judged off a of pro day. Yeah. Well, for me, it was um, I liked the pro day because well, one, I didn't do the forty. I was like, nah, I ain't doing that mess. <laughs> but um, I did, uh, you know, all the little stuff like you know, vertical five ten five, all that good stuff. But what I really enjoyed with the pro days because you know I wasn't one of them top dogs. So at the combine, if you're one of the top dogs, you go meet with all the coaches individually, and you're just kind of they they meet you and put you on the board and do all that good stuff. So I wasn't one of them top dogs. So I didn't get to do that. But at the pro day, the thirteen coaches that did come, you know, I got to sit there and they put me through the board, and I think that helped out a lot for me because they, they saw that you know I might not have been the fastest but when it came to like understanding defenses and concepts and how offenses are going to try to attack you um, I was really good at that and they saw that you know man this guy could be a smart player for us and get guys lined up at the worst and uh, that's what you know because Cowboys came Brent Maxey and those guys came they put me on the board and I think that really opened their eyes up to me thinking like, oh this guy he might not be the fastest might not be the most athletic but he's, he's going to be where he needs to be at on the defensive side of the football. And uh, I think that did a lot for me. It didn't get me drafted, but it got me in the door, and that's all that matters. And I think end. what really helped me out was I did a lot of receiver drills. They put me through receiver drills, and they, I guess they was able to see that I can play receiver because I was catching the ball pretty good. <laughs> Boy, he was a nightmare out there. One-on-ones, man. Yeah. They used to, man, this dude would cook up everybody. They, 
I he was scared to go up there. I ain't messing oh, with him. Sean so Lee was my favorite. Oh, man, favorite. he used to have Sean Lee cussing out everybody. <laughs> we, 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 we don't have the help in there. Because <laughs> oh, he was Cause he's always so serious. So serious. <laughs> he can't be running that route. There's an offensive lineman right there. Like, oh, man, he be getting so hot. <laughs> he be cooking him, too. He cooked everybody out there. It was an unfair drill. Unfair drill. Well, that's that's the beauty of being a you know jack of all trades. And, and now, and it's interesting, every team is looking for you. Yep. Uh, Lance Dunbar. We need you to be able to catch it and run it, and there's a spot for you in the NFL in, in today's league. So you got to be able to do that. So I said, good luck to guys as they're trying to go ahead and get this thing done here. And one thing I took away from from this whole kind of combine week was uh, the Dolphins saying door shut on Deshaun. Where is Deshaun Watson going to play? Yeah, you know this is not a great quarterback class by all accounts Mm-mm. of the combine. There's no you know the, hey this guy's going to be number. one. So you're thinking, if that's the case, and there's so many quarterback-needing teams, that somebody at some point in time would try to figure out Deshaun Watson, yeah. who can play. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. a dog. When he's out there, uh, he's I would a say top he's, five quarterback. Yes. So I I'm, believe so. You know, so I'm just trying to figure out here, you know, if Bob Kraft can go through his whole issues <laughs> yeah. and not get suspended nothing, and just keep on rolling, when does Deshaun Watson's situation get handled, and, and what does the team do? Because you know, Peter King on on his uh, NBC Sports column said that there's some folks who think that Watson may not play in 2022 again. And he, but he's getting paid though, right? So like, that's what, if I'm the Texas, I'm like, all right, if you ain't gonna play here, I'm not gonna just pay you to sit on the couch. I'm, I'm actively, hey, you gotta have somebody out there for him. The problem with Deshaun Watson right now is his contract. If you trade him, his dead cap to to the Houston Texans is fifty one million dollars. Mm. Mm. That's, mm, that's the problem. The, that's the what do you mean problem. So, well, like we expecting the Texans to go play in Arizona the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> so I mean, he's, he's, he's just, just not saying, playing. I'm just saying that's like is he like he doesn't want to play cap. for the but Texans or is he doesn't want to play for the Texans, Texans and the Texans are done with him. So they need to they need to trade him. Yeah, but they and, might, ain't gonna ain't nobody gonna do that. And so, it might be personal, and they probably. So at this point in time, it's, very, it's just very interesting that you know. Here's a you come out of the combine. There's no real, you know. There's there's no Andrew Luck you know, yeah. is going to go. There's no there's no guy, and the sense is not even right now. You're not even here about maybe a guy in the top five. He's like, okay, this is not a good quarterback class. And so right. to me, if if that's the case, then I'm looking at Deshaun Watson as a real legitimate player that some of these teams should be going for. Because if you need a guy, here's a guy who can play. Mm-hmm. You'll have to sort the legal situation out here. Yeah. But as I said, that. if Bob Kraft can go through what he did with the whole arrest and hiding the videotape and he got nothing, Not a well, then then maybe Deshaun Watson will get two little games or something. I mean, I'm just serious. I mean, I, I don't. You said it earlier. It's not fair. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. But I'll say this. Everybody, okay, you the Washington Commanders, you need a quarterback. Yeah. Badly. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I mean, in all the messes they've been through, their organization. <laughs> mm, I don't think they're gonna be ca- casting too much judgment on it. Nah. You can't play for us. <laughs> Actually, you're the right guy. <laughs> you fit just fine. You gonna be all right, you know? They paid um, him ten point five million dollars last year to sit at the the house, chilling, just what? chilling. So, mm. so that's what I say, man. At some point in time, I mean, you know, if you're thinking of these different teams that need a quarterback here. Um, you 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 try to figure okay what what is the issue with Watson and get with the league what 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 are the legal ramifications what are you gonna do from a suspension standpoint but a, a guy that's talented out here um, I I just can't think of another time where I saw a guy just just basically in purgatory mm-hmm. with that kind of talent yeah. and a quarterback lead that needs him. And if you're Cleveland right now, who would you rather have? Deshaun Watson or yeah, Baker Mayfield? You know, running that yeah. out there. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of teams that got some troubles. You know, you're Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. I was about to say Pittsburgh Steelers out there. You know, I mean, Ben had his issues with the ladies so back he in the did. day. So, I mean, they ain't like did. they can get on some high. We don't have, we don't accept that kind of guy here. Yeah, he was there. He was there. Right. So, so that's why I just find it very interesting to say, um, the guy, this is a, I'd like to know what happens with this situation because there's going to be somebody that can get, is going to get a good quarterback. Yeah. They get a real good difference yeah. making oh, yeah. quarterback. Young too. Oh, yeah. still, yeah. Yeah. still young. Lance Dunbar, man, we appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming right on, Big Dog. Enjoyed it. All right, uh, Barry Church, Danny McCray off today. Our man Chris Bean handling things. Big Will, everybody here at DallasCowboys.com. Uh, we appreciate you making sure that the Players Lounge happens. We'll talk to you next Monday at 10 a.m. Central Time on DallasCowboys.com radio. 
This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?